Section 6.5, squares and rhombi. Rhombi is plural for rhombus. Rhombus, definition, a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. So all the sides are going to be the same length. You could also call it a parallelogram with four congruent sides because every rhombus is a parallelogram. Theorem, a quadrilateral is a rhombus if and only if its diagonals are perpendicular. So perpendicular means perpendicular to each other. So in a rhombus, the diagonals will always be perpendicular. So this is going to be a rhombus if and only if diagonal rho was perpendicular to diagonal mh. If and only if means you can read it backwards. If the diagonals are perpendicular to each other, then it's going to be a rhombus. It's assuming that it is a parallelogram to begin with. Theorem, each diagonal of a rhombus bisects a pair of opposite angles. So in this rhombus, when I draw this diagonal, remember the angles that are opposite are congruent in a parallelogram. In a rhombus, the diagonal cuts those in half. That's true in both diagonals cut the pair of opposite angles in half, like so. Square, definition. A square is a rectangular rhombus or a rhombicular, I made that word up, rectangle. A quadrilateral that has both, that is both a rhombus and a square. So if it's a rhombus, all sides are the same length. If it's a rectangle, that means all the angles are 90 degrees. That is a square. It's a marriage of a rectangle and a rhombus. Name all the quadrilaterals, parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, or square, that have each property. The opposite sides are parallel. Well, that's true of all of them because that is true of a parallelogram, and all these other shapes are parallelograms. Two, opposite sides are congruent. That's also true in all of them. That's a property of parallelograms, and these are all parallelograms. All sides are congruent. That's true in a rhombus. Also true in a square. It does not have to be true for the other shapes. Four, it is equiangular and equilateral. Equiangular means all the angles are the same. Equilateral means all the sides are the same length. That is a square. Number five, use the rhombus with BA is 10 to determine whether each statement is true or false. Justify your answer. So it's suggesting that maybe CE is also 10. For that to be true, that's saying the diagonals are congruent. The diagonals are congruent in a rectangle. A rhombus does not have to be a rectangle. So we would say this is false. The diagonals of a rhombus do not have to be congruent. They could be, but they don't have to be. False just means it can be false once and it's a false statement. True has to be true 100% of the time. So same instructions, BA is 10. And then it's suggesting that CE, that's this diagonal, is perpendicular to BA, this diagonal. And that is true. We just had a theorem today that said the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. That theorem doesn't have a name, so we have to write it out. Continuing on the flip side. Use rhombus, I, J, K, L, and the given information to solve each problem. We're told the measure of angle 3 is 4 times the sum of x and 1. We are told the measure of angle 5 is 2 times the sum of x and 1. We are supposed to find the value of x. In a rhombus, the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. 
since a rhombus is a parallelogram, the opposite angles are the same. So that makes these four angles all the same. Also, the other diagonal bisects its opposite angles. So that means these four angles are all the same. Another theorem that we had today said that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So that means 90 degree angles all the way around. You don't need to draw all four. I'm just doing it for effect. Well, looking at this triangle down here, we know what all three of the angles are. So we can use the angle sum theorem to add up all the angles together in the triangle to get 180 degrees. If we distribute the four, we're gonna get four x plus four. If I distribute the two, we get two x plus two. Combine like terms, 4x and 2x is 6x. Plus 4 and a plus 2 and a plus 90 is a 96. If you subtract 96 from both sides, you get 6x is 84. And if you divide both sides by 6, you get x is 14. Question said find the value of x. We have done that. So we're finished. Last one. This one is a doozy. Determine whether EFGH is a parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, or square. List all that apply. Well, let's first figure out, is it a quadrilateral? So to determine that, we're just going to draw a little picture, a rough sketch, if you will. We got E is 6, 5. That's about yonder. F is 2, 3. That's about yinder. G is negative 2, 5. That's about hinder. And H is 2, 7. That's about right here. You connect them in order that it, that it calls the shape. E, F, G, H, and then back to E. So it is a quadrilateral, so it could be some of these things. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first determine, is it a parallelogram? If it isn't, it can't be anything else. To do that, I'm going to compare the midpoints of the diagonals. If they're the same, then it's parallelogram. Then, once I've established that, I'm going to check the lengths of the diagonals. If they're the same length, it's a rectangle. Then, I'm going to look at the slopes of the, of the diagonals and see if they are perpendicular to each other. If they are, then it's a rhombus. If it's a parallelogram, rectangle, and rhombus, then it has to be a square. Let's do this. I'm going to pull this over so I can see it. You don't need to write it down twice. So I'm first going to tell, once again, is this a parallelogram? To determine that, the midpoint of GE has to be the same as the midpoint of EF. Pardon me, EH. So midpoint formula. Sum the x values divided by 2, followed by summing the y values divided by 2. So I'm going to find the midpoint of GE first. The x values for G and E are negative 2 and 6. The y values for G and E are 5 and 5. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. 5 plus 5 is 10. It simplifies to 2, 5. For this to be a parallelogram, the midpoint of the other diagonal has to also be 2, 5. I'm going to write down the midpoint formula, sum the x's divided by 2, followed by summing the y's. The x values for, I have e and h here, I mean, this should be, I apologize. One diagonal is e, g, the other is h, f. I did not have that written down. 
here or here. The x values for f and h are 2 and 2. The y values are 7 and 3. 2 plus 2 is 4. 7 plus 3 is 10. This reduces to 2, 5. So right now, since the midpoints are the same, we know with 100% certainty this is a parallelogram. If it's a parallelogram, then it could also be other shapes as well. For example, it could be a rectangle. To determine if it's a rectangle, right now we're not sure if it is, once you know it's a parallelogram, which we know, diagonal GE should be the same length as diagonal FH. To find their lengths, we use the distance formula. So the length of GE is the square root, the difference of the x value squared, plus the difference of the y value squared. The x values for G and E are negative 2 and 6. The y values for G and E, 5 and 5. Make sure that your radical is long enough that it covers everything, like so. Negative 6, a negative 2 minus 6 is a negative 8. 5 minus 5 is 0. Negative 8 squared is 64. 0 squared is 0. 64 and 0 is 64. The square root of 64 means what number times itself is 64, and that number is 8. For this to be a rectangle, the other diagonal, diagonal FH, has to be the same length. I'm going to use the distance formula to see what its length is. The x values are 2 and 2. The y values are 7 and 3. Before I continue, I'm just going to confirm that those numbers are right for FH, 2 and 2, 7 and 3. And they are correct. 2 minus 2 is 0. 7 minus 3 is 4. 0 squared is 0. 4 squared is 16. 0 plus 16 is 16. Square root of 16, what number times itself is 16? Well, that's 4. Since the diagonals are not the same length, this cannot be a rectangle. Now let's check and see if it's a rhombus. In order for it to be a rhombus, diagonal GE has to be perpendicular to diagonal FH. This is going to tell us if it's a rhombus or not. So to figure this out, we're going to find the slopes of the diagonals. I'm going to find the slope of GE, and I'm going to find the slope of FH. Using the slope formula, change in Y over the change in X for each of these. The Y values for G and E, I have 5 and 5. The x values for g and e, I have a negative 2 and 6. 5 minus 5 is 0. Negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. 0 divided by negative 8 is 0. Check this out. If the slope is 0, that means that you have a horizontal line. That matters because the perpendicular line is going to be a vertical line. So let's see if the other line is perpendicular. Change in y, our y values are 7 and 3. Our x values are 2 and 2. 7 minus 3 is 4. 2 minus 2 is 0. 4 divided by 0 is undefined. I would also accept undies for short. If the slope's undefined, it's a vertical line. 
is a horizontal and a vertical line perpendicular. You betcha. So this is a rhombus. It is not a rectangle. It is a parallelogram. In order to be a square, it has to be all of those, and it is not. So we are supposed to um, determine which of these it is. So we would say parallelogram and rhombus. Please do your assignment, section 6.5. Have a great day.